at the same time, you said this piece about um, people not really, you know, knowing or understanding um, how critical it is to be relationally sound. Here's the thing. People don't realize how important it is to be good with yourself, Mm -hmm. to be good with you. You know, something I said literally just the other day, I said, when one thing you will never find a whole person in is a broken relationship. Mm -hmm. Call it controversial. A whole person who has done the work, who is self-aware, who has dealt with their traumas and triggers and trip ups, who is conscious of of how they show up and mindful of how they show up and has done the inner work and has healed from some things and released some things. Somebody that has done that work is hyper aware of somebody who hasn't done the work. And when they find themselves in a relationship with people who haven't done the work, it's like, Mm-mm. all of a sudden it's real uncomfortable. All of a sudden it's real hot under the collar. All of a sudden it's like, Ooh, I need to create some distance. I need to extricate myself. Something has to change because wholeness and brokenness cannot coexist harmoniously. It can't happen. You know, when people used to be like, um, I'm looking for my other half, you know, two broken people coming together leads to all kinds of attachment, dysfunction, but two whole people, whoo child, that's, that's a powerful thing. And what happens too often is that two broken people get together and they kind of become codependent in their dysfunction. And then when one of them gets whole and the other one is still broken, you have to solve for that equation now. Now some conversations have to be had and some decisions have to be made. But the whole person is primarily focused on, I have to be good with me. And I, I, at the end of the day, I have to look myself in the mirror and I have to be accountable to myself and good with myself and secure in myself. And when I'm good with me, now I'm going to seal all the work that I've done by by uh, providing the appropriate boundaries that are going to keep me in this place rather than losing myself to somebody else's brokenness. You know, it's interesting because there was a group of us that went out to celebrate one of my girlfriend's birthdays. And we were sitting at the table and it was a guy who was at a table across from where we are. And he was like an eye shot of us because it wasn't nobody in the restaurant with us, but us. It was really kind of interesting because it was a Friday night. The restaurant was completely empty except for the six of us sitting at a table and him sitting across the way. Oddly enough, there was only one person who was single at the table and it was the person we were celebrating. Everybody else was in a relationship and he had eyes for her. Right. So eventually we invite him over as we reach the dessert phase. And obviously he can hear everything that we're talking about because the restaurant is completely empty. And we chuckled to ourselves because we think he had about four or five courses like he was locked in. Right. He went from appetizers to his meal to dessert to the after drink because he's (laughs) locked in on the conversation. So when we hit the dessert phase, we invite him over. He sits down and within minutes of him speaking, I turn to him and say, you've been on a healing journey. I can tell because of your conversation. It became very obvious to me, to your point, that you begin to recognize your lingo is a little different, your phrasing, your thought process, the way your maturity. Exactly. (laughs) It's a little bit different. And it was so noticeable to me, not anybody else at the table, where it caught my attention because his perception and the way that he handled interacting in the things that he was saying to the context of our conversation had all of the markings of you've been through some things and you have been healed through that. And so I completely agree with you. 